for those of you that are going to be gone today, um, for Friday, uh, we're going to talk about conduction um, a little bit and how it relates to electrical charge. Uh, so first of all, conduction occurs when two objects with different net charges come into contact with one another. So we could have an object that has like a negative 12 charge and an object with a positive 2 charge. They will conduct uh, charge to each other um, when they touch. So as a result of this contact, uh, negative charges move from an area of high density, which would be more negative, to an area of low density, which would be less negative. Now, as an example, when you're sitting in the classroom, uh, the desks are all on one side of the classroom. So when you are in class, all of the people are sitting in the desks. That would be an area of high density in terms of people in the classroom. In the back of the classroom where the lab tables are would be an area of low density for people in the classroom. And the same thing applies to charge. So we'll talk about that a little bit more as I look through these two examples. Um, if you're taking notes uh, at home or on the road, uh, you may want to draw these two uh, symbols. They don't have to be the exact same picture. They can be squares and circles. It doesn't really matter, but it helps to illustrate what we're doing. Now, I'm looking at the object on the left-hand side, the one that looks like a lollipop, and I see that it has positive two charge, and it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight negative charges. So that tells me that the overall net charge of the lollipop-looking thing is a minus six charge. And the, po the star shape, um, looking at it, it only has positive charge. There's no negative charge as of yet, so it would have a plus two charge. Okay, so now we're going to go, so they're, and they're not touching. Now we're going to go ahead and touch the lollipop to the star. And we touch the lollipop to the star, we have to remember, like we talked about earlier this unit, that positives can't move. They have to stay put because they're the, generally, I, the idea is that they're inside the nucleus of the atom, so they don't go anywhere. But the negative charges can move. Now in this case, the negative charges will move until the charge in both objects is equal. So if I had a negative eight on the left side and zero negative on the right side, I'm gonna make these move until we have the same amount of negative on both sides. So that's gonna look something like this. So now what has happened is that the ratio of positive to negative charges is the same. And that's really important to remember. So when I look at the new net overall charge for the lollipop, the net overall charge has got two positive things, four negative things, so it's gonna be a negative two charge and the star has a negative two charge as well because it's four negative things two positive things so it's a negative two charge as well so the thing that we have to remember is that conduction stops when both objects have the same charge. And it doesn't have to be negative, it doesn't have to be positive, and it doesn't have to be neutral, it just has to be the same. So um, moving on, there are a couple of rules for conduction, and I highly suggest you copy these down. Um, but the first rule is that positive charges do not move, okay? The second rule says that negative charges move from high density charge to low density charge when objects touch only. Number three says negative charges stop moving when two objects contain the same ratio of positive and negative charges. Okay. So th those are the rules for conduction. And you know, once you've, you might want to pause the video and copy this down. And once you've done that, 
uh, start the video again and go on to the next slide because I'm going to go through a couple examples to kind of reiterate how this works. Okay, welcome back. So in this case, um, I suggest that you copy example one, two, and three down. They will help you when you do the homework. Um, so I'm looking at example one. I have two objects. They are not touching. They're in the before situation. Object, um, for example, A has no charge. It's got four positive things, four negative things. That's a zero charge. Object B has four positive things and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight negative things. So that means it has a negative four charge. And when they come into contact, when they touch, the positives have to stay the same. They can't move. So they're going to be in the same orientation, same. They're going to stay with each object. Object A and object B, we need to compare now. They are going to, the negative charges are going to move until both of the objects have the same charge. So if we remember that object A started with four negative charges and object B had eight negative charges. I want the ratio to be the same. So if we take a second and think about how can I get the ratio to be the same, I'm going to add two charges, two negative charges to object A, which meant that I took two negative charges from object B. Which ones? It actually doesn't matter. They're just going to be, they're just going to transfer to object A. So at this point, when I look at the ratio of positive to negative things, I have four positive things in object A, and I have six negative things in object A. That gives me an overall net charge of negative two for object A, and also negative two for object B. So in this case, both of the objects have the same charge. The charge isn't positive, or it doesn't have to be positive. It doesn't have to be zero charge. It just has to be the same. Okay, so by the next one, I suggest you copy these boxes. And let's take a look at where we're at. So in object A, again, we have a positive two charge, because I've got three positive things and one negative thing. And in object B, I've got a zero charge, because I've got three positive things and three negative things. And when I stick them together, conduction occurs, and we remember that positive charges don't move, but negative charges will move. So in this instance, object A started with one negative charge, and object B had three negative, char negative charges. So I'm going to move one more negative charge to object A, and I'm going to leave two with object B. And once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and reassess what the charge of both of them is. So when I go ahead and look at the charge for both of them, I see that I've got three positive things and two negative things. So that adds up to a plus one charge. And a plus one charge. So I'm doing this video during fifth hour. So you heard that bell. Okay, now... Um, Last example, I highly suggest you copy down this sentence, or two, rather, and you are now going to go ahead and try to figure out what their charges will be after they touch. And I realize that some of you can just look at this and know the answer. I'm going to try to organize it a little bit so that we feel like we understand, we, we can see what's going on a little bit differently, I guess. Um, so the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to say that object A... has a charge of minus eight. And object B has a charge of plus two. And what I need to do is I need to figure out the difference between the two of them. And we do that by subtracting. So negative eight minus a plus two will give me a value of um, will give me a value of I'm changing colors because why not will give me a value of negative six okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide 
the, the difference by 2. And when I divide the difference by 2, I get a value of negative 3. So that tells me that objects A's, so we have an initial charge, we have a final charge, okay? So objects A's initial charge was negative 8, object um, A's final charge is going to be a minus 3. Object B's initial charge was a plus 2, object B's final charge is also going to be a minus 3. Oops, I'll change the color back. So what that tells me is that both objects, after conduction, will have a net charge of negative 3. So your homework for the evening is to go back and do worksheet number three, which is about conduction. The first couple of the first couple of problems you're going to be looking at, trying to make sure that the ratio of positive to negative are the same, and then try to follow the path of what happens as you go along. The next three problems are just like example number three. You have to figure out what the charge, uh, what the net change in charge is, uh, and figure out what the final charge is, and then there's a trickier one in there and then the last the other side because it's a two-sider is meant to be a little bit challenging you are given uh, objects and in a scenario and you're gonna have to draw charges in those objects to explain why why those objects are in that particular scenario um, good luck with your homework and we will go over it on Monday and um, have a good weekend